Welcome to Tom's Tech Notes. You're watching video Reflector 4, how to mirror and record your iPhone or iPad on your Windows PC Quick Start. The Quick Start video briefly describes the settings needed to get Reflector up and running quickly. Reflector will mirror and record your iPhone and iPad displays and your webcam using a Windows 11 PC. This video is in playlist iPhone and iPad. There's a link to the playlist at the end of this video and in the video description below the video window. The user's guide video describes and demonstrates all reflector settings. These videos use an iPhone 11 with iOS 15.6, an iPad 2 with iOS 9.3.6, and a PC with Windows 11 Home. The steps to start mirroring may change for other devices or other iOS or Windows versions. Warning, don't execute Reflector in Windows 11 high contrast mode. You won't be able to read the text in the boxes. Start Reflector 4 on the PC. Before you begin mirroring and recording, set auto lock on your devices to never to prevent the display from timing out while you're recording. Here's how to do it on the iPhone. Tap Settings, Display and Brightness, Auto Lock, and tap Never. Don't forget to reset Auto Lock after you're finished recording so that you won't accidentally run your battery down. Here's how to set Auto Lock on your iPad. Tap Settings, General, Auto Lock, and tap Never. Steps are remembered, so you only need to set them before the first time you use Reflector. Whenever you make a change on a settings window, click apply at bottom right to save the change. And also, it's best to stop recording before you change any settings and then start recording again. Click settings, general, broadcast name. Check the box use system name. That causes the name of the computer to appear here and it will appear on the device windows for setting up mirroring. Show client name always causes this line to appear above or below the mirror display. It has some controls on it that we'll be using. Always on top, I would recommend you not check that. The always on top feature means that if you try to move a window on top of the mirror displays, the mirror displays will stay on top. I don't have it checked. So standard Windows rules applies. If you move a window over them, the window will cover them. On startup, show quick connect window. Don't check it. That's all the changes for the first screen. Again, if you make any changes, click apply before you exit the screen. Connection. This is the resolution of your monitor. Use that. Best for high DPI. Airplate security, none. On connection, connect and show device. Show frame automatically causes the frame to appear around the devices. If there are any buttons on the frame, they will appear and it will look realistic. Display full screen. This causes problems, especially on a two monitor display, which I have. We'll go into it a little more in the user's guide. Full screen background. These are the color of the background if you're using the full screen, which we aren't. Recording. Recording mode, all connected devices. If you're only using one, you can set it to one. But I'm using two right now, so I'm going to get leave it set there. Background color. In the recording that re the reflector makes, these displays are surrounded by this color. Recording resolution, 1080p. Use the default here. Try 4K if you have a 4K monitor. Recording flames per second. I use 30. Recording quality high. And I did make a change, so this is now clickable. Click it. I made no changes to network, director, or student screens, and go to advanced, logging level normal. I enable AirPlay because that's how you're communicating between the devices and the computer. I'm not using Google Cast or Mirror Cast, so I disabled both of those to cut computer overhead. Don't want to launch the program at login, don't check it. Classic render. If you're having problems generating playable recordings, try using the classic render. Otherwise, don't use the classic render. Control window, include control window on automatic layout. 
check the box. We will discuss the effect of checking the box in the user's guide. That's the last settings change. If you want to clear the cache now and then on your on uh, when you're running Reflector 4, go ahead and do that by clicking here. Here are the steps to start mirroring on the iPhone. I'm already mirroring, but I'll describe the steps you will follow to start mirroring. Swipe down from the top right corner of the iPhone to show the control window. Click the AirPlay box, which is the two overlapping rectangles in this box. As I said, I'm already mirroring. If you're not mirroring, this line won't be here and this line won't be checked, and you will tap the computer name. That will start mirroring. Once you have started mirroring, you have the option to stop mirroring by tapping here. Tap elsewhere on the screen to get rid of, the, of this screen. Tap again to get rid of the control screen. Here's how to start mirroring on the iPad. Drag the bottom up. If you're not mirroring, this box will say AirPlay. Tap it. If you're not mirroring, this line won't be here and this line won't be checked, but it'll have the computer name on it. Tap the computer name. Once you tap it, this line appears. The first time you do it, this will be turned off and you will click it and move it to the right to turn on mirroring. Once mirroring starts, tap elsewhere on the screen to get rid of the pop-up, then tap again to get rid of the control center. And now we're mirroring on both the iPhone and the iPad. If you did want to show your webcam, you can click the symbol here. And that moved everything around, but it is showing my webcam. I'm not really lighting the room for the webcam, but that's how you show the webcam. There are some options for the webcam. If you click this symbol below on the line below or above it, you can select best, best for high DPI, which is the setting I normally use. You can set it to be always on top. We talked about that option uh, earlier. And again, you can set it to be full screen, but I recommend you not use the full screen option. Click the webcam symbol to get it to go away. Next, we'll show you how to record with Reflector's record function. Before we, we do that, I'm going to point out that while Reflector has many ways to change the appearance of the mirror display, only two of those changes affect the recording. This option here to show or hide the frame affects the recording. And if you select it, and, and this option lets you set, select the color of the frame. And that also affects the recording. That shows on the recording. So you have the option to show or hide the frame and change the color of the frame, and that does affect the recording. If you look at the options for the iPad, and it is an older iPad, the only options it offers are to show or hide the frame and to make it black or white. That does, again, affect the recording. But none of the other changes, like dragging the sides of a display to change its size, moving it around, None of those changes affect the recording that Reflector 4 makes. For that reason, if you want to be able to fully control the format, and if, for instance, you want to be able to point with the cursor as I'm doing, instead of recording with Reflector 4's record function, record with a screen recorder. That's what I'm doing to make this video. That gives you full control of the format and everything you see on your PC screen shows exactly how it will appear in the recording. The other advantage of using the uh, screen recorder is if I want to bring in other icons or, or things that you're showing on my computer screen and put them in this area, they will also show on the screen recording, but they will not show on Reflector Force recording. To narrate your recording, click the microphone symbol to activate it, then select the microphone by clicking here, while recording, you can mute the microphone by clicking the symbol to, to activate and deactivate it. To start Refactor for recording, if you're doing more than one device, you can click the red dot above or below each device's mirror display to start recording that display. If you start both of them, they'll both be put on the recording for Red Reflector 4. You can stop either one of those recordings by clicking the red dot again. When you stop the last device you're recording, you'll be prompted to specify a location to save the recorded file. Another way to start recording of one or more devices is to click record all. If there's more than one connected, they'll all start recording. If there's only one re connected, that'll start recording. So you can click that and start them all recording. 
Red dot indicates that it's recording. And there's a timer showing on each of the lines above or below the mirror display to show that it's recording. Once you've started recording, you can stop recording by clicking the dot again on each one or by clicking stop here. If you stop the last device that's recording, again, you'll be prompted to specify where you want to save the recording. This X will stop recording and mirroring for the device on the line. I recommend you don't stop them that way because if you accidentally stop the last one recording, you are not prompted to save the recording. Likewise, if you close the reflector control window, you'll be prompted to verify you want to close the window, but if you do close the window, you will lose any recordings that aren't finished. So I recommend you don't close this while you're recording anything. Now the eyes will hide or show the recording on the screen, but will not affect the recording that Reflector 4 is making. So if I click the eye on the iPad line, the iPad stops being showing on the display. It is still recording. And the notice that the format of the screen has changed, but the format of the recording will not change. It'll still show both of them recording with the format determined by Reflector 4. I'll make a sample recording because I want to show you the changes you make to the screen do not affect the recording. For the sample recording, I'm mirroring both the iPhone and the iPad. I'll start recording them both. I'll hide the iPad recording. Notice that caused the iPhone mirror display to move. I'll bring it back. Now everything's moved around. Again, it doesn't affect the format of the recording, only of the screen display. Now I'll stop recording the iPhone. Now I'll stop the recording and save it. This is the sample recording. It begins with me recording both the iPhone and the iPad. Stopped recording the iPhone. After a few seconds, stopped and saved the recording. The user's guide has a more complete recording example, and it gives a complete description of all recorder functions. If you enjoyed this Tom's Tech Notes video, please like it and leave a comment. To watch my other videos or to read many computer help articles, please visit my YouTube channel or my website at the URLs shown here. There are links in the video description. When thumbnails appear, click the one at upper left to watch other videos in this playlist. Click at lower left to watch a video specially recommended for you. Click my photo to visit the Tom's Tech Notes channel. To subscribe, click the red button. If you don't see the red button, hover over my photo to show it.